some of you have already watched the previous standard video based on the LK60. So now today we are going to start another new accounting standard which is called as what? SLFRS 15 which is called as the SLFRS 15. Basically, purely discuss about what? The revenue of an entity. Purely discuss about what? Revenue of an entity. So, before we discuss these technical areas in SLFRS 15, first, if you consider these accounting standards, we should know how this comes. Even before that, I guess you all are aware of LKS2. LKS2. Lanka Accounting Standard Number no. 2. Then, obviously, you all should know this LK16 because even I have discussed this LK16 before. So, these are also accounting standards. These are from the LKS version. So, for your syllabus, you will be getting two new accounting standards for you. You will be getting two new accounting standards for you. One is SLFR is 50. SLFRS 50. The other one is SLFRS 60. Those two are the recent modification for your advanced level syllabus. So if you see SLFRS 15, I will tell you why this is really important for you. Because for your syllabus, they introduced the SLFRS 15 for the first time in the last year. That means they introduced this SLFRS 15 for the year of 2019. From year of 2019 onwards, for the revenue recognition, in your syllabus also, we have to apply what? SLFRS 15. Believe me, once they adopted, once they introduced this SLFRS 15 for advanced level in 2019, almost in this, that year, 2019, they checked this SLFRS 15 in the first page. They check this on the first page. So before that, we had to use what? LKS 18. Probably, if you are a person who is listening for these accounting standards for the first time, you might have already done with your lecture one. LKS 18. Believe me, LKS 18 is already abolished then it's not in use right now because they have in globally they have introduced IFRS 15 so in Sri Lanka we have adopted this revenue standard as what? SLFRS 15 we have taken it as SLFRS 15 so that's the recent change for this revenue recognition standards not only this LKS 18 now we don't have the LKS 17 LK17 accounting for leases instead of LK17 now we are getting what SLFRS 16 if you see a grocery what they do they are doing the buying and selling they are doing the buying and selling so the way that they are generate the revenue is they will sell it they will buy it then they will sell it so that's how they generate their revenue so that's the nature of revenue that we generated from a grocery. But if you move for a hotel, the revenue generated by a hotel, it's somewhat complex from the, the revenue that they generated from groceries, as an example. Even before arriving for Sri Lanka, from UK, the foreigners or the tourists may already book few hotels in Sri Lanka, as an example, Galadar Hilton for one month. So, their revenue recognition would be somewhat different. So, even the foreigners would cancel for one week. Even they book it for one month, they will cancel one week and they will again do the modifications. They will do some modification for that contract for three weeks. So, revenue recognition would be much complex. Not only from the hotel, if you consider a construction company, as you, you come with the agreement, you come with the contract, to build a house for you. So do you think that construction company will construct your building or house within a one week? No, never. Within a two weeks? No. Sometimes they will take more than one year. So that means 
we have to recognize the revenue over a period of time if it is a construction company not only for a construction company if you refer for a telecom telecommunication industry revenue as an example if you consider a company like dialo mobitel etisla hatch and etc etc see the way that they have to recognize the revenue it's somewhat different from hotel grocery as well as from a construction company why because they gives you different different packages they would say it's a couple package they would say it's a post paid package they would say d to d 250 standalone price it is called as the standalone price now for this air conditioner and maintenance services in this agreement we call it as two promises two promises given by the company so you know what a promise is so just take the simple clarification for the promises even you might have given so many promises throughout your lifetime You might have given some promise promises for your parents. Look here my mother look here Apache. No worries. For the next term this definitely I will promise you I'll be take more than 80 marks for the accounts but you never got 80 marks for accounts for your entire life. So promises. But this promise is not something like this. So this promises is abundant by agreement. It's abundant by a contract legally bounded. So now these are called as promises in this agreement and from the SLFRS 15 terms these are called as performance performance by obligations these are called as performance obligations price is called as what that price is called as your standalone price that mean if you have sold it separately what's the price stand alone but if you refer for transaction prices with the combination of these promises how much is the amount customer agreed to pay so the transaction price is how much 120000 transaction price is 120000 revenue recognition we are having a model called what five step model So we are having the five-step module. If you refer for my example number one, even I didn't emphasize that for you. Even from my mind, I followed this five-step module. After following up with this five-step module, only I can recognize the limit. obligations from the literal terms then you will be ended up with the mess right so this part complex area if you learn this properly in here you will be ended up with slfrs 50 with a smiling smile with your face right so this step 2 is the base for you categories of end product can't be what can't be the performance obligations only the end products can be what based on the context uh, based on the agreement based on the contract you have to refer you can have this from different people that's fine first one is fine distinctiveness test but the question is still in the context of the contract these are interdependent to deliver the end product because items which is included under the end product 
those are not separate performance obligation keep it in mind so now i guess you all got proper understanding about what recognition of the performance obligation so you have to check the distinctiveness test for that so just make it simple and just keep it in mind those example and go for the exam so that's all